Now our next speaker is Dan Collins. Dan Collins is uh, in Denver and has uh, in Littleton, Colorado, and has his own company and uh, will, uh, I was about to say, entertain us, but okay. he, he, he will educate us, is what we should say, with his paper on the various methods and applications of, uh, uh, of uh, methods for estimating the market value. And I'll put these forms here in the back or around here. I'm Dan Collins. I work uh, under the direction of uh, Trevor Ellis at Ellis International. He's my colleague and my boss. Uh, I've also uh, worked uh, for a number of other companies, Anadarko Petroleum uh, doing land work, Quest doing land work, and for a few law firms. My talk's about the, the three different uh, types of, of uh, property valuation methods and uh, uh, being uh, sales comparisons, and um, and then the income approach, cost approach, and sales comparisons approach. And then in this talk, I'll review some of the some of the different chosen methods under those different approaches, and as well as uh, probably uh, compare, comparing the uh, methods as well. The income approach is uh, based on anticipatory benefits from the property interest that is the subject of the appraisal <coughs> and it includes all methods that are based on the income of or cash flow generation potential of the mineral property interest the net present value method is or the discount rate method is the most common method and particularly for advanced and operating stage properties however it can be used uh, uh, for other properties as well um, depending on you know if the property is producing some sort of income as a derivative or even as a, a not part of the mineral estate. And the income approach, uh, income approach to royalty method is best applied uh, uh, royalty, uh, and what it does is it values the royalty holder's interest and it's emphasized in uniform appraisal standards for federal and land acquisitions for valuation of mineral properties. Under this method, leasehold interest is not recognized, just the royalty interest that is passed on to the royalty in property owner lessor. And extreme care must be taken when using this because uh, sometimes uh, the mining company, which was mentioned by Jerry earlier, uh, does not, it doesn't account for that interest as well. And so then, you know, it's like some of the values missed on some of that. And Another breath method is the capital rate method, used primarily for commercial real estate appraisal. A constant cash flow or stream of rent payments generated by the property is assumed into the long distance future. And the valuation is equal to the annual uh, operating income divided by the cap rate. And say, you know, the, the cap rate is 10%, so the valuation is 1 million. This is good for rental properties. Um, uh, in, in its established term value. The cost approach is another approach. Uh, first we had the income approach, now we have the cost approach. The cost approach is based on the economic principle of contribution to value. The cost approach method is used extensively by Canadian and Australian practitioners. It provides ways of estimating the property value based on contribution uh, property components and historic expenditures to the property's value. Methods mainly applied, applied to raw exploration land through early re resource assessment stage of the property. Theoretically, it employs a technique of summing up all the land and building components if used for appraising an entire subject interest. For individual property components, uh, the principal contribution states that the value of a particular component added, summed up together, measured against the terms of the contribution to the value of the whole property. So you have, uh, different components of the property, and then uh, you figure the value of those components and then sum them to the value of the property. For mineral properties in the USA, uh, almost exclusive depreciated replacement cost method is applied to buildings, plant, and equipment. Uh, DC, R value, I have the formula up there, uh, is uh, the replacement cost, physical, 
uh, minus the physical depreciation, functional abstinence, plus external abstinence. Other methods are also available for evaluation of the minerals of state, land surface, and water rights. The cost approach appraised by value method is popular in Canada. And that is the, was that the, oops, oops. Okay. Cost approach, uh, appraisal value method is popular in Canada. And it, its value is equal to the effective expenditures that have already been spent on the property, plus warranted future expenditures. Care must be taken here because warranted future expenditures are not always established. I mean, it, you could come up with some number and it's probably not right, and therefore the value is escalated up. The exploration property is worth meaningful past exploration, and uh, like I said, warranted future costs, whatever they may be. So care must be taken when doing this type of method. Another approach uh, is the geoscience matrix. Uh, this is where they take the unexplored claim cost and a number of other factors, location, grade, geophysical, geochemical, and times the geology factor, and they're all mul multiplied together to come up with some sort of point system and coming up with a value uh, to that property. Um, and that one I'm not too familiar with uh, other than just the fact that I researched it. The cost approach, the appraisal value method is, uh -oh. oh, okay, I'm not used to this mouse. <laughs> Another approach is the ME method, the multiples of exploration expenditure method. It's very popular in Australia, and uh, prospective enhancement multiplier PM is based on the valuer's assessment of the properties prospectively to date is applied to the relevant and past expiration expenditure on the property. Uh, the PEM uh, range is from 0.5 to 3, uh, so it gives a factor of uh, a multiple of 3 times the property or 0.5, so it, it's pretty, uh, pretty well, it's popular in, in Australia anyway. Another cost approach uh, method is the rural cost approach method. This one here is uh, used with this linear equation and the, the quantities already uh, figured out and, you know, first you sometimes do the sales comparisons approach. You come up with uh, these values and then as a, as a cross-reference, what, what I did on a recent project is I used this formula to uh, recalculate uh, the, the value of the property using this and using the uh, simultaneous equations and or ratio analysis to break down the the, uh, or to come up with a similar or close answer to what we came up with the sales comparisons approach. And what we did is we actually found out that we were pretty darn close. The sales comparisons approach is one I'm more familiar with and it's the market approach. It's based on economic principle substitutions and the methods includes direct and indirect sales comparison methods. An indirect sales comparison procedure can have similarities to land mix adjustment procedures in rural appraisal. Uh, most mineral appraisers have no formal training in sales comparison or adjustments. Real estate appraisers who attempt mineral property appraisals use small adjustments from 10% to 30%. Larger value adjustments, sometimes 100, greater than 100%, are necessary for mineral property comparisons, such as tonnage and grade and risk. And adding those all together, total adjustments may be greater than tenfold. And um, that uh, sometimes raises some eyebrows, but you know, you know, it comes up with some, you know, it's pretty accurate. The sales comparisons approach, we use these different adjustments. Uh, first, we, we come up with, we have to have these parameters set, the agreement sales date, effective date evaluation, price, price paid per unit, long-term product price expected, first adjust unit price paid to effective date of valuation, and adjust long-term product price to effective date of valuation. We do this and we come up with uh, the adjustment basis and then we adjust the, the property to those values. Is that right? To, yeah. the, to the subject property. To the subject property, I'm sorry. Uh, sales, sales comparisons approaches, these are the uh, 
the adjustment factors, deposit grade. We go through all these, figuring out uh, different adjustments for each, uh, you know, uh, up to the price of the subject property from a number of different transactions. What we do is we find several properties around the world with similar grades, uh, similar deposit size, and then compare them to the subject property. And we come up with, uh, and then we come up with this table, which I don't have with me, and we adjust uh, percentage-wise uh, up or down. And then when we come up with the, with the bottom value, then we usually take the median and come up with a value for the, the subject property. In conclusion, mineral appraisers of real property, mineral interests have three approaches available for market value appraisal. Within the three approaches, there are many valuation methods available. No matter what stage of exploration development and or operation mineral property, actually a method used for many of the approaches might be useful for valuing the subject property interest. That's all I got. Thanks very much, Dan. We have time for a couple of questions. Anybody? Otherwise, I'll lead off by saying I'm, I'm one of those who kind of raises an eyebrow if the adjustment in the comparable sales approach goes uh, beyond the, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 or 30 percent even, but once you get up above the, the 100 percent, then there's something inside my head that says, hey, maybe this particular sale is not really comparable if I have to make that big an adjustment. Having said that, then, I have been in that position also and if that's maybe one of the few sales I have to try to adjust from, then my, uh, my suggestion to the speaker and the rest of the audience is you have just then got to do everything you can to try to justify, substantiate that particular adjustment number you come up with. And a little... Uh, uh, assistance that I have gotten in the past has been then to set up for myself a simplified DCF approach for the particular property and then try to just very maybe take uh, out of the old hat take uh, a discount rate 12 15 percent or so it's not too important what that is but then try to come up with a variation in the NPV in the bottom line, the variation, if I then vary that particular parameter that bothers me so much, that gives such a large thing. And then I see, what, how does it vary the NPV? And then maybe I use that as a numerical adjustment. At least then I have shown other appraisers, review appraisers, the nasty lawyers who cross-examine me in court and so on, I have shown them how I get to it. If they don't quite agree, they can then also use other numbers, but at least the methodology has been used. Uh, Dan, that was not a question to you. That was rather to get the discussion. <laughs> that, that. that was another <laughs> yeah. are, there, are there any other comments to Dan's uh, paper at this point here? Uh, I, I actually have a question. Um, would, you, would you just sure speak, into, okay. speak into the mic? And then I'll get ready for the next speaker, but please pop the question. Uh, yes, this is John Manis. Uh, Dan, my question is, uh, you had mentioned the multiplication of exploration expenditures method, and uh, I know from the literature and the publications, the term of reasonable past expenditures is kind of a little debated. So I was wondering if you could share with the audience yours and perhaps Trevor's experience or comments on what you justify as reasonable past expenditures. That's a tough question. Uh, reasonable past expenditures. Yes, I, I need some help from my <laughs> colleague here. Uh, the, the way reasonable past expenditures is defined uh, for this, uh, it's, it's coming from Michael Lawrence and, uh, and other, 
uh, colleague uh, in, uh, in Australia, uh, uh, this one. And, and it's basically uh, is, is something that has contributed to the, the value of the property. Rather, so the, the drill holes that didn't hit anything, uh, they, uh, they get thrown out. And and uh, and it, uh, typically they uh, the the practitioners who are using this method um, uh, really hit uh, expenditures from that were done say 30 years ago pretty hard too. Uh, so they they um, they don't transfer all of the current value of those expenditures into the reasonable past expenditures. Thanks a lot, Trevor, and thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks, Dan, for the paper.